Being the arbiter for this event, Magnus Carlsen will make his first move, and the time will be ticking. So as we said, this is 10 minutes per side, and, and let me clarify that even in serious tournaments you rarely have time controls like this. There is sudden death, which means if the time runs out, the game is over. There are no other opportunities to get time with every move. Time is ticking away, and Magnus's opponents should be smartly making their moves when he's not at the board to try to get him under as much time pressure as possible. So as Magnus said when Eric asked him the question about relating chess to business and, and other areas, that the main goal and usually the person who gets control over the middle area of the board, or as he said, the area that is most meaningful, usually wins that business venture or usually wins that battle. And so in the beginning of a chess game, as you can see on many of the boards behind me, most of the pieces are being developed into the center of the board. This, from the center, every piece has more opportunities. More opportunities generally leads to more powerful pieces. More powerful pieces get better tactics, and then we have checkmate. So you'll notice that very few of the pieces develop to the edge of the board. In one of the games, we have a bishop developing on a diagonal. If I can find that board behind me here, it should be interesting to figure out which camera it is. And I'm struggling with that, clearly. The, the bishops are pieces that move from a long range away, sort of stealthy. And so in one of our, our games here with Mr. Brett Bryan, we actually have a, a bishop being kettled, which should lead to some interesting dynamics I will highlight in a little bit. So Magnus is playing quickly because he doesn't have a lot of other options. The thing that we can learn from this game at this stage is that usually whichever one of the players comes out with a faster control over the middle of the board as we already highlighted will be the first person on the attack in, in chess the initiative is is probably the most important thing just short of winning pieces the initiative the ability to make threats and to keep the game going at your pace is something Magnus does better than probably anybody in history and in some of these games, it is uh, the initiative is already favoring him probably more than his opponents would like. So as we look at this game over here, it's a little bit difficult to tell here with the camera, but you can see that uh, Mr. Brett Bryan just castled. He moved his king into the corner and the rook hopped over. This is an important part of the game for those just learning. One of the biggest mistakes that beginners make in addition to not controlling the most meaningful area of the board, as we should do in all things in life and business. But we leave the king and the things that are the most valuable to us unguarded or at least neglected while we're focusing on something else. The best players here are consistently getting their king safe, as we just saw young Toby do as well. He castled, and this is something, again, we can all learn from not only thinking about our own plans, but making sure that we do our best to stop our opponent's threats. And if they can stop Magnus for just long enough, they might actually have a chance to win. Right now, Magnus has an average of about eight minutes left on every clock, and I wasn't kidding, and I know you, you would be expecting us to do whatever we can to make it a spectacle, but you'll notice we're already five minutes in and none of the games are over yet. And his clock is ticking every board that he's not at. And so as far as the physical challenge, 
and the mental challenge for him to move as quickly as he needs to, the game is real. And it's it, this is not a uh, this is not a, as I said, having done more than a few of these with Magnus, I'm always surprised by how difficult he's willing to make the challenge. And I have never seen or been a part of a clock simul that only allowed an average, if you think about it, one minute per move. He has one minute to think total while his opponents have a minute, and he's hardly using that. He has to move usually within a second or so in order to keep the the game on his side. Some of the games are getting very, very difficult for his opponents as he's now helping out uh, young Bailey Milken with the only possible move there. But that was an illegal move. Magnus was giving him the, the only move on the board. Again, speaking of the boards, they, they do have our... Uh, they are custom built just for this event. Again, sponsored by World Quant. They have the Clay Magnus logo, which is Magnus Carlson's company, in the lower right-hand corner. And they have the World Quant logo in the upper right corner, or Black's right-hand side. Win or lose... Magnus will actually be providing these boards as a gift, along with an autograph after the event. I'm not even sure if all the players knew that, so a special gift, courtesy of World Quant and the event. So as we see in some of these games, the, uh, the king, Black's king, his opponent's king, has been run out into the board. And uh, again, it's a, it's a little difficult. I apologize for that, that's seeing the right. angle of the pieces. But if you can see a cross on one of the tall, dark pieces, that's the king. The kings that are still in the center, or that have moved and did not have a chance to get castled, are the ones that um, they, they may not be lasting very long. In fact, we're, we're getting close to some. And, and on that note, I'm going to ask all the players that, uh, just for the sake of safety and, and not disrupting anything, if your game does finish first, to please stay seated and, and wait for us to complete the event. We are hoping to have a, a Q&A and to go over some of the more critical moments from these games with Magnus as soon as they're done. Magnus is playing faster now and we notice a switch in the trend. Most of the time his opponents are now thinking and not him. His clock is not running on, on most of the boards, although I think they were listening. Everybody move. So we do have our first finish here with Ari. Ari, good game, buddy. Let's wait. Let's sit tight, and uh, we will we will answer some questions. And you've been hearing some of our advice about getting our king safe rather than leaving it in the middle of the board. A good lesson. You're never losing if you're learning. This is very important for young players as they learn the game because chess can be a very intimate losing experience, given that in many cases, other team sports they play like basketball, soccer, uh, you, you name it, there. If you, if you have that kind of attitude, there's certainly always somebody else to point a finger at. Chess is the most intimate and brutal loss because there is literally no other answer, no other conclusion to draw than the other person was smarter than you, better than you, and they beat you. And there's no other way to see that game. So chess, if you're not a self-reflective, willing to learn from your losses player, will not be something you play for very long. All right, I think that pawn was actually, Bailey, I think that pawn was actually on C6, buddy, not the white square. Yeah, there you go. Move it up. Yep, that's where it was. All right. You're welcome, Magnus. You're welcome. The games are heating up, many of them still going strong, though, for his opponents, putting Magnus under this physical and mental pressure to, to move physically quickly, mentally quickly, using as little time as possible. Usually in a tournament setting, the moment you get under five minutes, uh, and actually the rules allow players under five minutes to to play faster, uh, players in tournament settings are, are usually required to keep score. Under time pressure, players are no longer allowed to keep score, but in this setting, Magnus was under time pressure to start, and he is already under five minutes on multiple boards. And he knows it. Another game finished.
players when you're done. If you'd like to reset the board back to the beginning of the game, you are welcome to do that. It would probably help Magnus not to mentally even look at the board and think that there's moves to make. Once again, you're welcome, buddy. Allowing him to move a little faster. So in some of these games, we see that the true strategical nature of chess taking shape here. In fact, in this game with Toby, Magnus is under time pressure and, and still has quite a battle on his hands over here. Chess being the symbol of strategy and deep thinking, obviously played by, respected by world leaders. Uh, usually the middle game stage is what we see, where we see most of the planning and the strategical thinking, or strategic thinking take shape where you're going to outplay or outplay in your opponent. You have to go back there. You have to go back there. You have to move back there, dude. I think this game is almost over. You've you got to be careful. Try not to press the clock if it's, if it's not a legal move. The middle game stage is where the true critical thinking and all the things we hear about chess being a great cognitive, a game for cognitive development, being adopted by more and more schools around the country and the world. As so many classrooms modernize and gamify the learning experience, chess doesn't even have to convince them it's a game that's good for critical thinking, learning the consequences of your actions and bad decisions, which is why it's being played and adopted in so many schools all the time. And we have still, the majority of the games are still going, and, and an absolute physical uh, stress is Magnus Carlsen right now, having to move very quickly and do everything he can without any time coming back to him on moves, which is, again, not standard for him. He plays in tournaments where normally players get a little bit of time back on the clock with every move, which sort of prevents situations like now where you see him making mad dashes because the term sudden death uh, does apply, at least in the sense it applies to dodgeball. Nobody will die here. But if the time runs out, it's over. We have another game finished. Thank you, Bailey. Bailey, go ahead and set up the board there for us. Thank you. Another physical challenge Magnus is going through, and that's sort of the circumstances we had of this being one of the most popular requested events here at the, uh, at the Global Institute event this year. This was, I think it was the most popular, if not one of the most popular requested events to participate in. Uh, so limited spacing had us put the boards in this long way where you see it's a little bit difficult for Magnus to have a game going here and physically over there. Most of the time in simuls like this, yet another convenience that the world champion would have is that they would be in a U shape or more of a circle, making his, his travel slightly more convenient. But we're not, I'm not telling you that to have mercy on him. I'm telling you that so that we will all be very much on the edge of our seats as we see these clocks ticking down. Magnus only has two minutes in this game here with Toby, which given the position is going to be quite the task here. And he knows that he is moving fast. Well, this game is now transitioning into what would be the third stage of a chess game, which would be the end game. The end game is sort of loosely described as, as where one player is trying to finish off the other, and the other player is trying to hold on for dear life. Which means usually you've transitioned out of the more critical strategical stages, and Magnus has, has done a decent job to get an advantage there against Toby, but it is a small one, which makes the game still one that will be difficult to win. Over there we have another game finishing. I believe we have a, a board that was missed. Possibly. Two of the games going here against two of our more favored opponents coming in. Our senior software engineer from Google and young Toby. And I think I think we have a game here that was missed and, and a game that was won on time. But uh, we won't hold it against Magnus just yet. We'll we'll 
we'll we'll see we'll see how the rest of the games finish here and come back to this one. Should be fitting for an event like this and the audience we have that this is one of the most if not the most difficult chess simultaneous experience I've ever witnessed or been a part of, and Magnus took on quite the challenge to play in this setting. Oh yeah, I was completely forgot about this one. Huh? Completely forgot, and that's okay. Because my queen, all my, all my pieces he, are in the starting positions. He's doing good, and I think okay. he got confused. I think he thought the game was was over, but uh, that will that will have we'll come back to it. Congratulations, nonetheless. If, we have we have a good position for Magnus there, but as he said, a little bit confused by the uh, by the piece there. Okay. Another game finished. Thank you, Mr. Knapp. Very intense game still going here. Magnus is down to under two minutes against Toby. Three minutes here against Mr. Brett Bryan. Only a few boards will make it a little bit easier for him to focus. In fact, it looks like we have two left. Two games still in progress. And not too much physical distance between them. That worked out. But as we said, at this stage, usually in the end game, you notice that the queens are off the board. The most powerful piece on the board. Once the ladies come off, usually it does become, if you have an advantage, a matter of technique. As they say, a phrase in chess where one side is trying to convert on an advantage, and in this case Magnus is attempting to close in on Black's king. Toby strategically playing the odds and doing a very good job of not only making good moves on the board, but bringing the world champion down to his final seconds. With that trade being made, Magnus has set a trap, and where the Black King is actually checkmated in the corner because of the two bishops, we see the, the bishops line up. Strangling the king and choking away squares, and uh, a very, very good game here. But one that ended very, very nicely, a very, a very nice finish. And you can see the coordination of all the pieces working together. Again, a big difference between the master and the beginner is not one piece at a time and playing like we call hope chess, where you hope it works out for you. One of the strongest mindsets that the best chess players in the world have is that it's no longer a game of if. Well, I mean, white, I was just on the white move. So black played c5 on board two, and white, uh, black just played e5 on board three. Board three, g3. Board one, black played g6. Board one, c4. On board two, it's your move, and black played c5. Uh, board two, d5. Board three, black played knight, c6. Board three, bishop, g2. Board one, black played bishop, g7. Board one, knight, f3. Board three, uh, sorry, board two, black played e6. Board two, knight, c3. Board one, Black played d6. e6? d6, d6. dog uh, d6. On board uh -huh. three, black played f5. Board one, uh, knight c3. And board three, knight c3. Board two, black took on d5. Ah, uh, he put e6, I thought d6. Uh, board 
Word two, uh, C takes D5. Board one, black played E6. Board one, castles. Board two, black played D6, pawn to D6. Board two, knight F3. Board two, black played G6. Board one, black played H6. Board two, bishop F4. On board th uh, three, black played knight F6. Board three, E3. Board two, it was eight. Board one, it was H6, right? H6, yeah. Uh, board one, bishop E3. All the challengers are deep in thought. <laughs> board, board one, black play knight e7. e7. Yeah. Board one, queen d2. On board three, black play bishop c5. And on board two, black play a6. Board three, knight g2, e2. Board two, black played a6. a6, apple 6. Board two, a4. Board two, you're at 634, Magnus. 634. Board one, you have 630. Board, at six. Board one, just played knight to d7. Uh, board one, knight to e2. Board two, black played bishop g7. Board two, e3. And board three, black castled kingside. Board three, d4. Board two, black, black castled kingside also. Board two, h3. Board three, black, play e takes d4. Board three, e takes d4. On that board, you have seven minutes and 15 seconds. That's better. Three challengers once again plunge deep into thought. I'm sure Magnus is nervous, wondering when they're going to move. On board two, black play queen e7. More two, bishop e two. On board three, black played bishop b four. More two cast. I uh, mean, board three castles. Knight bd seven. Board two, knight bd seven. Board two castles. Three black play bishop takes c3. Board three? Yes. Yeah. Knight takes c3. They say that in chess after the first four moves there are three billion possibilities. We're at about move 15 on every board. Gotta wonder how Magnus is keeping track. On board two, black play b6, boy six. Board two, rookie one. On board three, black play d6. Uh, board three, rookie one. On board one, black play c6. Board 
Lord One Knight G3. On board two, Black Blade Bishop B7. Board one, uh, I mean board two, Bishop C4. On board one, Black Blade Queen to C7. Board one, Rook A to C1. On board three, Rook to E8. Board three, Bishop G5. On board two, black play knight to h5. Board two, bishop h2. Magnus, you're at 509 on board two, 551 on board one. On board two, black play knight to e5. Board two, knight takes e5. Board three, you're at 633. Black takes back on e5 on board two with the bishop. Bishop takes e5. On board two, queen takes e5. Board two, queen b3. As a point of order, if the players lose on time, they lose the game. On they board one, time. black castled queenside. That's queenside. That was risky. Uh, <laughs> board one, b4. On board three, Black blade h6. Board three, bishop takes f6. On board two, black blade rook f to b8. F to b8? B like boy, board eight. Uh huh. Makes sense. Uh, board board uh, two, rook a to d1. On board three, black took on f6 with a g pawn. G takes f6. Uh, board three, queen h5. On board one, black played king b8. Board one, a4. Board two, black played bishop to c8. Uh, board one, f4. Board no, I mean board two. Board board two. two. Black has 2 minutes and 44 seconds on board 3. Black does. Before I left that the position is lost. Board, board 2, black play queen to e7. Queen to e7. Uh, e as an egg, 7. Mm -hmm. Board 2, queen c2. On board three, black played bishop, e6. Uh, board three, queen g6, check. On board three, you have three minutes more. On board two, time's about even. And board one, you have three minutes more. And black just played knight to c8. Board one, a5. On board two, uh, black play bishop to d7. Board two, queen e2. Board three, black play king to f8. Board uh, three, queen takes h6. On board one, black played king to a8. Board one, a takes b6. Board three, black is down to 136, you have 510. On board one, black took on b6 with a c8 knight. Board one, rook, c1 to a1. On board three, black played king to f7. Board 
3, D5. You're down to 333 on board two. On board one, black blade, A6. Board one, C5. On board three, black blade, rook to H8. Uh, board one, D takes E6, check. Uh, I mean, Board yeah, three. Board three. Board, yeah, board three. three. On board one, uh, black blade, knight back to c8. Board one, bishop, bishop takes eight, a6. And on board two, black blade, queen to e8. Board two, rook d1 to a1. Okay. On board one, black blade, king to b8. King to b8? Yes. Board 1, bishop takes b7. On board uh, 3, black blade, king e7. Board 3, knight d5, check. Made the next move. Board... Woo! Uh, <laughs> on board 1, board 1, he played queen takes b7. Uh, board 1, C takes D6. On board 2, black plate B5. Board 2, A, B5. On board 3, black plate King to E8. Uh, board 3, Queen takes H8. That is checkmate on board 3. That is one down, two to go. <laughs> on board... Board 1. Black plate knight takes d6. Board 1, bishop to f4. And on board 2, black plate a takes b5. Board uh, 2, rook takes a8. On board 1, black plate e5. e5. Uh, board 1, d takes e5. On board 2, black plate rook takes a8. Board 2, bishop takes b5. Board 1, black plate knight takes e5. Sorry, on board 1, black, black plate knight takes e5. Ah, oh, okay. Board 1, knight takes e5. Black on board 1 takes on e5 with the bishop. Board 1, bishop takes e5. Board 2, black plate bishop takes b5. Board 2, queen takes b5. Board 1, black blade, queen to c7. Uh, queen to c7. Uh, board 1, queen to a2. Board 2, queen d8, David 8. Board 1, no, I mean board 2, queen to d3. Board 1, uh, black blade. Queen B7. Queen B7. Queen B7? Boy, seven. Like boy, boy seven. 7. Uh huh. Board 1, Rook E to D1. Uh, it's probably on F1, but it doesn't yeah. matter. Rook F2. Rook. On uh, board 2, Black played Rook B8. Like boy. Uh huh. Board 2, Queen D2. On board 1, Black played King to C7. King to C7? Yeah. Uh, Board one, queen takes f7 check. On black is down to 13 seconds on board, board two. Board two, black play queen b6. I resign. Board one, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to lose. Black yeah. has resigned on board yeah. one, you're down b6, to one game. I play rook to, e, e, rook to b1. Rook b1. Black has 23 seconds. You yeah. have a minute and six seconds. Black play queen b3. E4. Black played C4. E5. Black has 14 seconds. Queen B6 check. King H2. Pawn takes E5. F takes E5. 
Black has eight seconds left. This doesn't look fun. Yeah. <laughs> Queen to d8. Queen to d8? Yes. e6. And the time is up. Black has run out of time. Magnus wins on all boards. An amazing.